saw it, I was not a believer. I wrote it off. But now it's an uh, undiscovered species that's uh, looking to be discovered. And they are strange. They are like nothing else on the planet. These things, for whatever reason, they inhabit this place. It's a guaranteed bet. You go to this cave, you're going to see rods and capture them on video. But the quest to uncover the truth behind these bizarre creatures began long before these discoveries at the Cave of the Swallows. It all started here, at the very epicenter of alien activity, Roswell, New Mexico. March 19, 1994, Jose Escamilla was searching the skies of Roswell, hoping to videotape a UFO. And that's exactly what happened. I captured something that whizzed through the lens, or, you know, whizzed from across the road right over us. I'd never seen anything that was close to what we were talking about, a flying snake. I mean, I was totally blown away. Did Jose uncover proof of an alien life form? He was determined to find out. Jose launched a modest website in the hope that perhaps someone else had shared the same unusual experience. The response was overwhelming. First hundreds, then thousands of people logged on, all with the same story to tell. I finally heard that there was actually a website totally dedicated to rods. And this was wonderful news to me. And more and more people started calling me saying, hey, I think we've got a rod in our videos. Flying rods spotted in Maine, New York, Colorado and Hawaii, nearly 40 states in all. You see them in the city, you see them in the country, you see them in day, you see them in night, you see them in the air, they're everywhere. Jose appeared on television to talk about his strange discovery. Because I wanted to tell people, look, there's something among us that we all need to check out because it's alive. But rod sightings weren't confined to just America. This was a worldwide phenomenon. Rods were reported in Eastern Europe, Korea, Finland, and Israel. Jose wondered if Rods might be the greatest discovery of the century. You know, I was just totally excited. I said, what is this? Is this some kind of creature or a living thing? Not much is known about these unidentified flying objects, because not one has ever been captured. But researchers can make assumptions by studying the video. Well, it's a, a form uh, which has an exterior which is uh, composed of a cellular membrane and then an interior which is essentially a fluid-like uh, medium. The aspect ratio and the length of the width is, is very similar to maybe like a cigar. And, and running down the midline on uh, each side of their body is a transparent fin that acts like a wing in the air and a, a fin in the water. And they seem to undulate this fin at a very rapid rate. A translucent creature with no spine that flies through the air at lightning speed. It's no wonder some people are convinced that they're aliens. Right here on Earth. I have video footage of them going through solid matter where they can go right through a rooftop. I used to think that they were interdimensional in the fact that they aren't subject to the laws of gravity and the universe and physics that we are. I've seen him stop in midair. I've seen him move sideways. I've seen him move his groups in tandem, four and five, make the turn at the same time. Just unbelievable things that I never would have believed in. It may be that the rods, if they're put here by the aliens, are another plague, another UFO plague, sent to mystify us, uh, to show us even a tiny little power is something that can nevertheless defy all the science of uh, the modern world. Rods are the perfect alien invasion. You know why? Because here's something that's right under our noses, and because we are so intelligent, we fail to notice it. How long have they been here? Incredibly, some researchers think forever. It's feasible that there could have been a life form that was really moving at very high speeds all the time that we might not have noticed. Could it be that back in 1994, Jose videotaped the most conclusive proof yet that aliens are among us? 
every time I see a new rod shot that I know is a rod, you know, uh, it just totally blows me away, and I just want to keep furthering the investigation. An investigation that was about to take a surprising turn. <laughs> Flying rod. Alien invasion or undiscovered Earth creature? Weigh the evidence for yourself. Seoul, Korea. Local engineer Dr. Seo Jong Hon videotaped this incredibly clear rod in an abandoned farmhouse. These are flying in a different ways, not in a conventional way. The surrounding of the rods has some wings. Over the course of a single year, he also captured this stunning array of rods, all outside his own home. They look eerily similar to rods shot in other parts of the world. But the Korean connection doesn't stop here. This rod was filmed by a student near the Chungbok province. This is cigar shaped UFO they call the master from the sky. It does look like a cigar from far away. But as you can see, it has little appendages on the sides. And it's got something else, too. Enormous size. Astoundingly, this rod appears to fly from behind that distant mountain. Korean experts calculate that this UFO measures at least 33 feet long and is traveling at 6,700 miles per hour. But the evidence that rods may exist isn't all on videotape. Telempaya, Argentina. These faded images are believed to date back centuries. Could they actually be ancient documentation of rods? When I first saw these, I go, wow, that looks like a rod. It's just a, a stick with what appears to be undulations around the length of the torso. Now, these are a thousand-year-old rock carvings, petroglyphs. Obviously, they've been around for a long time. There actually have been a lot of... Uh... Uh, mythology and folklore over the ages that couldn't seem to be tied into rods. 1896, Crawfordville, Indiana. The whole town witnessed what they call a uh, sky monster. And they described it as being 30 feet long. It didn't have a head or tail, but it was withering through the sky, much like a serpent or a fish. The whole town saw it in broad daylight. Then, between 1956 and 1958, rods were first believed to be photographed in the skies above the California desert. With a regular camera and infrared film, T.J. Constable snapped pictures of what he called the critters. Could these archival photographs, eyewitness accounts, and ancient artwork be proof that rods had been here for centuries? Or are these theories simply bizarre coincidences from the past? Why has the number of rod sightings suddenly exploded? Most experts believe it's due to the widespread use of home video cameras. August 18, 2000. The Foster family takes a vacation to Roaring River State Park in Missouri. Looking forward to a day of shooting clay pigeons, Jesse Foster never imagined that he would also shoot this with his own camera. I noticed something as my daughter was shooting. Something flew between her and the camera, which I thought was a hummingbird. So I slowed the VCR down and it looked like a flying walking stick without legs. Jesse's footage remained a mystery until the night his grandson John saw Jose Escamilla on TV. I stopped at this channel for just a few minutes to see what it was about and they were talking about these flying rods. Suddenly he yells, Grandpa! And I said, yes, and he says, you're flying rods on TV. <laughs> At last, Jesse knew what to call the creature he'd discovered. It's kind of a golden tan color, which I thought was pretty neat. We actually got it in color. 